So welcome back to the Two Barties Award Show. This is James, I am still Alan, and in this part of the award show, we're gonna look at the most dominant type of vehicle available in the UK, taking market share like there's no tomorrow. That's right, it is the never-ending, seamlessly never-ending SUV marketplace. Now, we've categorized this into small, medium, and large once again, and there were things that we were looking for in all three of these categories. Basically, does it look cool? Does it look cool? Does it look cool? There are many, many SUVs. Some are like Tonka toys, some are pretending to be jacked up coupes, some will never even go onto a grassy verge. We weren't interested in that. We wanted to bring you what we feel are the best ones available this year. Okay, so let's have a look at the small SUV category. Now, the small SUV category, one of these may be slightly contentious. The nominees in the small SUV of the year are the Ford Puma. Bringing back a, uh, a hallowed name is always a difficult job because people will always want to have the coupe, uh, but Ford have done a fine job with the Ford Puma, an absolute fantastic handling vehicle, and I do believe we talked about some SUVs in our earlier episodes. Also this year, we saw the release of the new Renault Capture. Now the new Renault Capture, pulling faces, the new Renault Capture, uh, is a return to form for Renault. It is uh, priced really aggressively, lots of great technology, updated um, the quality and the equipment inside, and actually, for my money, looks nicer than the Duke. And we haven't even included the Duke in our top three. The last one is one of James's favorites in the marketplace at the moment as a small SUV. You chose the Audi Q2. Audi Q2 is the third one. About to undergo a facelift. We haven't yet seen the, the new model in the flesh, but knowing Audi, it will be a light touch. Uh, but the Q2 is also in the reckoning. So, <clears throat> the results were as follows. The capture was in third place, but joined on five points a piece were the Audi Q2 and the new Ford Puma. Let's take a closer look. Comment below. Let us know which one you feel out of those two should have won the award outright. Moving on to best family SUV. Now again, a couple of things that we did. We decided to make it a family SUV that was attainable for the majority rather than the minority. So all of these have a list price of under 40,000 pounds. So the three family SUVs that we chose, James, were? I am the Tucson, the Volkswagen Tiguan, and the Ford Cougar. Okay, so we have the Ford Cougar, the Volkswagen Tiguan, which has just recently been facelifted, updated, so we're uh, taking a few cues from the Mark 8 Golf, and then the radically styled Hyundai Tucson. So, did that do enough to win our family SUV of the year? We're looking at the scores. James is shaking his head. In third place, the Volkswagen Tiguan. In second place, the Hyundai. And top with a maximum of six points, our family SUV of the year is the all new Ford Cougar. That's right, the all new Ford Cougar, as you can see on the pictures here, available now with five different powertrains. You have your petrol, you have your diesel, you have a mild hybrid diesel, you have a full self-charging hybrid available, and of course, the plug-in hybrid too. So Ford's most electrified SUV, most electrified vehicle over all of its range is available right now in showrooms and is our family SUV of the year. 
The last award in the SUV arena is for the large SUV of the year. And like with the electric vehicles, we're not worried about price. We are all about, is it a cool SUV? Our nominees in this category are the Lamborghini Urus, the Alfa Stelvio, the Aston Martin DBX, and the I Forgotten and I'm Passing It Over to You. The I Forgotten and I'm Passing It Over to You, which is Audi the X Audi RS Q8. Oh, come on! So close, my friend, so close. Right. Now, as there were four in this category, our favourite one got five points. I'm still holding this book because it's got all of the awards in here. I'll put it back out of shot. So five points for the first one, three points for our second choice, two for our third choice, and one for our last choice. So do we have a clear winner? Well, let's have a look at those vehicles whilst we check the results. Okay, the results have been checked and verified. In last place is the Audi RS Q8. With six points, but only third place is the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. With seven points, we have yet another tie at the top with the Aston Martin DBX and the Lamborghini Urus. So again, let us know in the comments, out of those two, which one would you put at number one? Would it be the Urus or would it be the Aston Martin DBX? Now, I can reveal the scores behind the Urus. I gave the Urus five, James gave the Urus two points and we flipped on the DBX. Now the DBX, a lovely vehicle as it may be, great to drive. I'm not convinced by the styling at the rear, but the Urus for me has enough menace and enough mania to be a true Lamborghini. Why did you pick the DBX as your top? I just think it's a very nice car to look at. I don't mind the back and I'm guessing to drive and the Lambo well, it is more grunt, it is more powerful, it is a bit more like I'm going to tear your face off. Okay. But I just prefer the Aston. There we go. So you've heard why we chose them. I went for Urus, James went for DBX. Let us know in the comments below which one you would go for. Actually, just any comments would be nice. Just one. Just one. <laughs> Come on. Right. We'll be back shortly with the next round of awards from the two parties. Stay tuned. <laughs>